Hi, I'm Dr. Jane Holsall. I'm a Chartered Counselling Psychologist and I have a private practice in Millbank in central London. Great. And do you want to say something about the research you did? Yes, I did an IPA study and it focused on helpful and unhelpful processes in psychology therapy, in psychological therapy for female substance users. So the focus of the study was very much finding out from their perspective, giving them a voice, these women um, who had completed therapy about what worked for them. And when you say IPA study, what do you mean? Interpretive phenomenological analysis. Okay, just for people. So from their human. perspective, yes. Okay, and, and say a little bit about the paper at the end of it. Well, the paper found a number of themes that were really helpful for these women. Um, and they said what well, words couldn't express, identification with their counsellor and getting towards acceptance. Um, so things that they really felt had helped them get to, into recovery. So if you're interested in it, read, I'd recommend reading it. <laughs> and where did you publish it? In the count, uh, counselling... <laughs> Journal of Counselling. Oh my God. British Journal of Guidance and Counselling. Journal of Counselling. Sorry. It's <laughs> okay. Just went from then. Okay. So it's very memorable. The, the outlet is very memorable. So tell us something about like, so you did, uh, tell us your course was a doctorate in counselling psychology. It was, yes. And then you, you, you finished the doctorate, you submitted a thesis, which was how long? The thesis. Oh gosh. I think it was, I can't remember actually how long was the thesis? I think it was about thirty thousand words. Yeah, I think it was about thirty thousand words. And yeah. then you converted that into an article about of about seven thousand words. Was it? Yeah. And that well, it was less than that, I think. And that you know, that was part of quite challenging. You know, part of the process of turning it into a journal, is condensing it and making sure that you, you know, encompass everything that you want to say and retain, you know, the importance of the women's voices that's that for me was quite a challenge so so why was that challenging what was that process like for you well i think because it's ipa it's 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 about what they have shared so it's about putting to paper your interpretation of their experience so it's you know it can be quite long and in depth and so you want to be able to select what's important but also not miss out anything and you know that's of value to the paper so that was the difficult bit was it kind of selecting the quotes and, yeah, selecting the quotes and keeping it yes it was that was yeah. the hardest part okay how long did it take you to write the paper the initial thesis or the journal? The journal article. The journal article, gosh, um, probably a good couple of weeks, I would say. Okay. So a couple of weeks of coming back to it. But I think with anyone, when you've got a life outside of, you know, when you're working and you're a parent, you've got other things going on, it's, you know, it's finding that time to do it. So for me, it took about two weeks to, to do the first draft, to do the first draft. And that's what people, you know, it obviously goes off to get peer reviewed and um, and then you have to redo things and send off again. So it is a time consuming process all in all. So how long did it take overall from submitting your thesis to finally seeing the paper out? I think probably about a year. <laughs> okay. But I have to say for anyone that hears that and thinks, oh, no, I can't. I don't want to wait that long. We were in the middle of the pandemic. So I think there was a delay in terms of the people, you know, the academics who were able to review it and getting it to that point. So I think from the point that we submitted and yeah, there was a bit of a delay, wasn't there? But we got there. So, so can you say something about how the process went? So you wrote it and then it went to me as your supervisor and then back to you. Yes, went back to me. I had to obviously make some amendments, had to check all the sources, just... And also the other thing is that I had, um, it been a year since I'd actually graduated. And so I had to update some of the things because some of the stuff that I put in the thesis, obviously um, there was more up-to-date data in terms of statistics for addiction. So just incorporating that into the, the latest edition. So just what? making sure everything was up-to-date really. 
Yeah. Why why did you want to why did you want to do it to publish it? Because it was really important to me to do it. And I think it should be an extension of anyone doing a postgrad degree. I think it's a travesty almost that we you know, we ask people to participate in research on the pretext that we're going to do something with that information. And it should be beyond just, you know, graduating, using it to, to graduate. It's, it should be reachable. It should be able to be disseminated to the wider audience so that practitioners can use it, that people can build on that research. And, and most importantly, the participants are given a voice and that we can, you know, expand the field. Brilliant. And do you, do you feel that you did that by getting it out there? I really did because I have worked in addiction settings and I've done a master's in addiction and a counselling, addiction counselling degree. So for me, addiction is really important and I know that women in addiction are very marginalised. And so for me, getting the research out there, I was quite shocked. There was nothing out there existing that actually gave a voice to people who had completed therapy and were in recovery and asked them, well, what was it about psychological therapy that had helped reach that, you know, get you to that point? So for me to get the, you know, the information to get their voices out there heard and be able to write that in a research paper, I feel really contributed to the field. And I hope that, you know, many people will access it and use that information to support this client group. Have you had much feedback on the paper? Have people said anything about it? Yeah, I, I've had a really positive response from the people that have accessed it so far. So yes, so um, yeah, hopefully people in the professional will, will use it. What would you, like what do you wish that you'd known when you started the process? I wish um, if I was looking back that I'd had more awareness about the publication process, I think. I think it would be really important um, if you are in the final year and you are writing your thesis, I feel like it almost should be a mandatory extension of that process. I feel that, um, you know, what would be really helpful is perhaps a module or something or someone to say, look, these are the different journals. You know, if a supervisor could sit down with you and say, I feel these journals would be really helpful. They would be a great fit for your thesis and it sort of outline, this is the process, you know, like I said, I think our year process was long uh, than normal to publish a journal, so I wouldn't be discouraged by that. But I, you know, people should know this goes through a peer review. This is where you have to submit it. This is what's required. This is the word count. These are the ones that would suit you. And and you know, to get it out there is really important. So I think for me, yeah, more awareness. Great. So, so if, and if you were doing that module, what would be your main advice for students on, say, a master's or a doctoral program who, who are just finishing their research and thinking about publishing? I know how hard it is. I know what a slog it is to get to that point and what a challenge it is. So I would say I know most people reach the end, do their viva, submit everything else, and they think, wow, actually, I just want to switch off. I want time out from this. But I would say... The hardest part is completing the postgrad itself. So the hardest part is doing the thesis. So once you've done that and you have passed, be encouraged um, to take it that step further. Do the publication. It's a waste. Think of all the people that have participated in your research. Think about them. Think about you. It's, you know, it's good for your career. It's, it's good for you to have that behind you. But most of all, you know, you're doing something for the field and you're doing something for the people that have actually taken the time out to, to participate. So, you know, be encouraged, do do it. And um, because it's a waste otherwise, it really is. 